This is Slow English. Collecting subscriptions. The frog god frequently employs a magician to deliver its oracles to those who have faith. Should the magician declare that the god is pleased, happiness is sure to follow. But if he says the god is angry, women and children sit sorrowfully about and neglect even their meals. Such is the customary belief, and it is probably not altogether devoid of foundation. There was a certain wealthy merchant named Cho, who was a very stingy man. Once, when some repairs were necessary to the temple of the god of war, and rich and poor were subscribing as much as each could afford, he alone gave nothing. By and by, the works were stopped for want of funds, and the committee of management were at a loss what to do next. It happened that just then there was a festival in honor of the frog god, at which the magician suddenly cried out, General Cho has given orders for a further subscription. Bring forth the books. The people, all shouting assent to this, the magician went on to say, Those who have already subscribed will not be compelled to do so again. Those who have not subscribed must give according to their means. Thereupon, various persons began to put down their names. And when this was finished, the magician examined the books. He then asked if Mr. Cho was present, and the latter, who was skulking behind in dread, lest he should be detected by the god, had no alternative but to come to the front. Put yourself down for one hundred tiles, said the magician to him, and when Cho hesitated, he cried out to him in anger, You could give two hundred for your own bad purposes. How much more should you do so in a good cause? Alluding to a scandalous intrigue of Cho's, the consequences of which he had averted by payment of the sum mentioned. This put our friend to the blush, and he was obliged to enter his name for one hundred tiles, at which his wife was very angry, and said the magician was a rogue, and whenever he came to collect the money, he was put off with some excuse. Shortly afterwards, Cho was one day going to sleep when he heard a noise outside his house, like the blowing of an ox, and beheld a huge frog walking leisurely through the front door, which was just big enough to let it pass. Once inside, the creature laid itself down to sleep with its head on the threshold, to the great horror of all the inmates. Upon which Cho observed that it had probably come to collect his subscription, and, burning some incense, he vowed that he would pay down thirty tiles on the spot 
and send the balance later on. The frog, however, did not move, so Cho promised fifty, and then there was a slight decrease in the frog's size. Another twenty brought it down to the size of a peck measure, and when Cho said the full amount should be paid on the spot, the frog became suddenly no larger than one's fist, and disappeared through a hole in the wall. Cho immediately sent off fifty tiles, at which all the other subscribers were much astonished. Not knowing what had taken place, a few days afterwards, the magician said Cho still owed fifty tiles, and that he had better send it in soon. So Cho forwarded ten more, hoping now to have done with the matter. However, as he and his wife were one day sitting down. To dinner, the frog reappeared, and glaring with anger, took up a position on the bed, which creaked under it, as though unable to bear the weight. Putting its head on the pillow, the frog went off to sleep. Its body gradually swelling up. Until it was as big as a buffalo, and nearly filled the room, causing Cho to send off the balance of his subscription without a moment's delay. There was now no diminution in the size of the frog's body, and by and by, crowds of small frogs. Came hopping in, boring through the walls, jumping on the bed, catching flies on the cooking stove, and dying in the saucepans until the place was quite unbearable. Three days passed thus, and then Cho sought out the magician and asked him what was to be done. The latter. Said he could manage it, and began by vowing, on behalf of Cho, twenty more tiles subscription. At this, the frog raised its head, and a further increase caused it to move one foot. And by the time a hundred tiles was reached, the frog was walking out of the door. At the door, however, it stopped and lay down once more, which the magician explained by saying that immediate payment was required. So Cho handed over the amount at once, and the frog, shrinking down to its usual size, mingled with its companions and departed with them. The repairs to the temple were accordingly completed, but for lighting the eyes and the attendant festivities. Some further subscriptions were wanted. Suddenly, the magician, pointing at the managers, cried out, "There is money short of fifteen men. Two of you are defaulters." At this. All declared they had given what they could afford, but the magician went on to say, "It is not a question of what you can afford. You have misappropriated the funds that should not have been touched, and misfortune would come upon you. But that, in return for your exertions, I shall endeavour." To avert it from you, the magician himself is not without taint. Let him set you a good example. Thereupon, 
the magician rushed into his house and brought out all the money he had, saying, I stole eight tiles myself, which I will now refund. He then weighed what silver he had, and finding that it only amounted to a little over six tiles, he made one of the bystanders take a note of the difference. Then the others came forward and paid up, each what he had misappropriated from the public fund. All this time the magician had been in a divine ecstasy, not knowing what he was saying, and when he came round and was told what had happened, his shame knew no bounds. So he pawned some of his clothes and paid in the balance of his own debt. As to the two defaulters who did not pay, one of them was ill for a month and more, while the other had a bad attack of boils. And that's the end of the story. This is Slow English. 